I love it when something like this comes in. Something that, uh, like we used to sell brand new several years ago, get to kind of see how they hold up. And in this case, it's, it's held up very well. The folks took good care of it. It's a 310 BHS open range. It weighs about 9,040 pounds dry weight. With cargo, you could exceed 10,000 pounds. I do not consider this a half ton towable rig by any stretch, but it's, 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 it's like a giant fifth wheel bunkhouse all smashed down in one flat deck, but it's a hundred inch wide body. It's got 42 inch deep slides, which means it's like almost a foot wider in the living room than a normal travel trailer. Plus it's like at least seven foot tall because it's not just an east to west side to side ceiling vault. It's a whole north to south ceiling vault. There's, there's not really anything else like this out there. There's, there's plenty of other RVs with similar layouts, like a, a Cougar 34 TSB, a Freedom Express 320 BHDS. They're opposing living room slides. You've got a big seating slide, an island in the middle, but they're not like this. This is, again, it's extra tall. It's extra wide. The slide out is extra deep. Every It's just extra, I think, uh, as the kids would say. As, you know, it's actually very fitting. Open range is always very extra uh, during this generation. I actually think... This is one of the golden years of open range production, just because at the they were cowboys. Like that's part of the reason this has a, a slight sort of uh, very understated western motif to it. They were just cowboys. They were doing it different. They weren't. They they were bucking trends and they weren't following anybody else's rules, and it shows. There, it was just a, a product unlike exactly anything else you had ever seen. Like over here, they were doing the big full super slide party recliner, hide bed, uh, storage couch before anybody else that I saw anyway. And the slide is so deep. You have uh, removable uh, table mounts that can actually install in here. So there's a pair of tables where if you want to, you could turn this into a left or right dinette with a right or left sofa, or you could turn it into a full super seater, or you've got the recliner kickouts on both ends, or you've got a hide bed in the middle, or you could turn it into a double table mega dinette fit for the whole family and friends and game day, Super Bowl, go bucket, boom, afternoon. Didn't come out the way I intended, but I think you, I think you know what I meant there. Kitchen's got solid surface countertops. The, uh, the folks added a rear view camera, which is not a bad idea on a longer rig like this. Uh, the monitor here is included. You'll see the camera on the back. This is the part, like a lot, you'll see a lot of used RVs. They're like, oh, cool, it's got a rear view camera on it. But the monitor is no longer anywhere to be found. You don't have that issue here. Now, for entertainment, that wall right there is angled very nicely so that anybody can get a good look at it. The TV is kind of, there's a little bit of a box around it, but it's not boxed in. Like if I swing over here to the side a little bit. So if you want to put a bigger TV on that wall, you can. Just understand, depending on how big you get, you might start overlapping a little bit, uh, just a bit with your entry walk-in area. Uh, Furion TV, Furion uh, Bluetooth DVD stereo, Furion everything in this thing. Holy cow. Um, up in that little cabinet up there, if we take a peek, you'll see uh, a pair of drunken octopi coat hangers. The uh, wall below the entertainment center, by the way, is kind of prepped and ready if you want to add a uh, electric space heat and Tootsie toaster on that thing. It's all set. There's a little plug where you can, uh, you know, just run the wiring. There's an outlet kind of hidden inside there that you could do all that. It's a, it's just something you don't see a lot of is electric aftermarket electric fireplace prep, but I don't know. I think it works. Now you notice in the kitchen, everything is nice and big and deep. There's plenty of storage everywhere. That's an eight cubic foot two-way fridge, by the way. I love that built-in uh, wastebasket there. It's just everything that's just, in that regard, really makes sense to me. Um, moving back here through a solid privacy door, which is awful nice. You'll see that this has one of my favorite things here. I call it an eat and go dinette. I don't know why. I think one of the manufacturers that was in business when I first got into this industry uh, called it that. So for whatever reason, that's my alma mater. I always tend to kind of gravitate toward it. And you can see that obviously you got that fold up bunk and then you got the fold down booth below. One of the things that's less obvious though, is this is some very easy access storage. And notice how that's all aluminum framed. That's something that most of the time, Rockwood is one of the only manufacturers known for doing stuff like that. And that's, again, where I think this is a little bit more of a premier product than a lot of people realized initially. All these bunk windows open for airflow. And this was built with what was called the party room package, where this wasn't just a bunk. It kind of had 
a bit of a sofa vibe going on with the back cushions there. Although you could always just peel those cushions off and turn it into a bunk space. Also, just like storage below the dinette, you open that up, you see that there was some good storage down here as well, but also some dedicated hanging closet space over here, which is something so many bunk rooms lack. And this bigger RV, especially with that big dinette and this extra deep slide, if you were looking to find uh, a, a very comfortable used RV to convert over into like a work camper with a uh, office space or something like that. This is a uh, this is a really good fit. This is also one of the first travel trailers to which I was ever introduced that was tested, proven, capable, like zero to 100 degree or hot, cold camping or whatever you want to call it, you know. Now, over here, this has a forward bathroom instead of a bathroom by the bunks, which I know a lot of people like. It's going to give us a shower instead of a tub. Um, the uh, por uh, foot flush toilet here is porcelain. Couldn't figure out uh, which order I wanted to say those words in, so I kind of flubbed up uh, all of them a little bit. Now, if I come around the corner here, remember, this is like seven foot tall, so you've got yourself a huge shower in that thing. You're not going to have headroom in here. And um, I, I don't want to be deceptive because if you just look at this, you're like, holy cow, huge, huge storage in there. It's uh, a, a triangle taco storage, whatever you want to call it. It's better than nothing. You can still absolutely get some good linens and toiletries and stuff in there. But I'm not going to be shifty about it or anything like that. Now, uh, again, dual entry bed and bath. And if you notice over here, this actually has the fourth slide is here in the bedroom. We're looking at like a fifth wheel style closet slide out and you see it's got some built-in dresser space the other three quarters of it though uh only about a quarter of its dresser space the other three quarters is hanging space and then we have all the normal storage that you'd find in most uh bedrooms regardless your bedroom tv uh would be prepped over there or your tv mount as it were this is a 50 amp coach if you want to add a second drop in air this is where it would be located up there which is kind of nice you could have yourself breathing icicles if you're so inclined she's very cpap friendly with those nice open side stands and it looks like a small queen because it's just such a big room that is a 60 by 80 true queen with some nice big storage below it you might notice though how it's a little bit asymmetrical here uh, it's because the closet slide you know it has to retract and they don't want it to crush anything here's the funny thing though this the walk around space on this side of the bed is what you normally get in most travel trailers what you're getting over here is the extra space as a result of the wide body nature of this camper and you know what else i like about that it actually gives us a space to get dressed without getting half naked and walking into the uh, rv at large to have room to put on a pair of pants nobody wants to see that now if you make a travel stop and you open the door you can get in here just enough to get to the control panel and open the rest of the rv because that is pretty much all you're going to be able to access I suppose you can reach around the corner and get to the freezer. You can kind of reach the sink uh, from where I'm at. It is a big model with multiple slides and an island uh, that really kind of bosses up the room. It gives you a lot of space when you get there. It's just definitely made for being there. And I mean, it just feels like we got to start with the camp kitchen on this thing. It's got a, I think, one of the most highly appointed camp kitchens I've seen, uh, especially of anything in this generation with very few that might rival it. Laredo has done some very good camp kitchens. I'll absolutely give them credit. But a large fridge, microwave, real sink with a drain, outside cooker situation, plywood drawers, just like inside for all your little spatulas and bug sprays and whatnot. And as long as we're back here on the rear corner, uh, something else I want to point out is the interestingly located, but actually intelligently located. When you see it, you go, why don't more manufacturers do that? Or haven't they done it? The docking station is on the tail of the RV where all your like, uh, you know, water cable hookups and stuff. And if you think about it, like a lot of fifth wheels, a lot of travel trailers, they'll put those hookups in the middle of the RV or all the way to the front. This thing is, it's long guys. I think it's like 37 foot long or something like that. You'd need an extension cord just to get to the park hookups. Whereas on this one, you don't got to worry about it. The normal factory supplied uh, cables should be able to reach everything very easily. And as long as we're back here, take note too, you do have a full observation camera. We saw the little monitor inside. Now over here on the front side of that slide, you see that giant patio awning right there. There's LED lighting, if I remember right, in the tube of the awning so that you can kind of use the power in and out button on the awning to angle it how you want. That's an anti-slam door. As you can see, you got that big full entry window. Although, uh, you know, you can open that for airflow. There's obviously the 
um, shade on the inside you might have seen if you back the video up a bit. It, this was made before stable steps were super common. Those are easy accessories for us to add typically. I don't see anything in this RV that would prevent us from doing that. Uh, it had a camp kitchen, so you had a gas grill quick connect. But if you notice, you've got another one of those up here. And this was the first brand of RV I ever saw to standardize from the factory level the use of those strong arm jack leg stabilizers. Those things are the best. They're the absolute best, especially on a big wide body RV like this. Taking the, uh, the wiggle and the waggle out as people move around this big girl right here, it will absolutely reduce the, uh, the shimmy and the shake when people are, especially like at night, you know, when you're sleeping and someone's like moseying their way to the bathroom from across the camper, it's nice to not be disrupted. You see some wheel chocks in here and it looks like the previous owner's uh, weight distributing and anti-sway combo hitch is included with her. Doing my best David Blaine impersonation to teleport to the other side to give you a little closer look at that hitch there. You see the magnet holdbacks on all the baggage doors as well. Uh, and, and slam latches. Open range was an early adopter of things like that. And one of the reasons being, this is one of, especially at the time this was made, very rare examples of a flat deck fifth wheel in which uh, tr the, the travel trailers and the, uh, the fifth wheels from this brand were like a part for part match with one another. Now, I've mentioned it uh, earlier, but this is a 100 inch wide body product, eight foot four wide. And then your main super slide is an extra six inches deep. This is just shy of a foot wider in the living room than almost anything else produced in its time or even now. And I think a really good example of that actually is that Equiflex suspension uh, upgrade you see right there. I guess not upgrade since it was factory standard, but it's a, uh, a shock dampener system because this is a big, long, heavy trailer. You want to have a, uh, a little smoother experience towing it. And this thing is so big, I've actually got to go way out in the weeds here on the property line just to try to get the whole sucker in frame. Notice too, not just the living room slide is extra deep. The bunk room also benefits from that wider body and that deeper slide. And in a smaller room like that, <laughs> that's helpful. It's just 10 extra inches between the kids before they start going, he's touching me. Growing up, my parents would have bought the RV for that fact alone. My brother and I were always on each other's cases. Oh yeah, one more quick little thing here. The little um, wiring loom or whatever you want to call it, looks like it must have popped off the little bracket right there. Is it a major deal? No, it, it could probably be zip tied back up in place. We probably could have done it and I could have never mentioned anything. That's just not the type of person that I am. I want you to understand to, to the best of my ability and the best of your understanding, the, the the real deal of Ander Holyfield of this RV, basically. And now in terms of roof conditioning, the membrane looks good. This is a PVC roof membrane. It's a little dusty from storage, but one of the things about the PVC membranes, the skin itself is basically maintenance free. You maybe want to clean it every now and then. That doesn't mean the roof is maintenance free. That's not what I'm saying. Please don't ever let anyone try to tell you something has a maintenance free roof. They all have the same seals. A diesel pusher has the same seals up here and requires the same TLC as a bare bones basic travel trailer. And in that note, I want uh, to make you aware of the fact the seals up here have reached the age where they're in, uh, in need of some touch-ups. They're not in need of a full peel and seal, but there's three or four things like uh, say that, you know, that, that skylight, the kitchen skylight, skylights, the seals tend to fail or age out a little earlier than everything else because the skylight kind of acts like a little bit of a magnifying glass and it picks up extra heat and it cooks the seals a little more quickly. And by the way, nice little factory installed Max Air cover here over the bathroom vent. So if you got a pretty hefty, say like three quarter ton or bigger, or you could give us a call if you just have a site where you want it delivered, you want to use it more like a destination or a park model or whatever you want to call it. We can just arrange for a third party driver to bring it out and drop it off for you. You don't even need a tow vehicle. You can drive a little uh, Korean roller skate hamster car like me. <laughs> just a little peek into my life. So uh, give us a call down here. You need hitching, you need financing. We do all that stuff. We'll make it happen. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone. And a good example of that, right, is... is, is, is hmm.